Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be taking a look at my first nights out planetary imaging with a renowned Takashi FC100 DC refractor, one of the very best lightweight refractors available today. I'll also give some pointers for anyone wanting to give planetary imaging a go, so stick around because I'll be back. So here we are on my first night out capturing planets. It's been way too long since I've last seen Saturn, one of my favourite objects in the night sky. Saturn's back with us now though, albeit it's positioned quite low down. So light needs to pass through more of Earth's atmosphere, which is wobbly before it reaches the telescope. The wobbly atmosphere makes objects appear blurred so it's not ideal but to some extent we can dodge this using a technique called lucky imaging and with lucky imaging we film the planet with a fast frame rate camera and use free software such as auto stack art to select the sharpest frames and stack those together so we have a good base image to work with finally we process the image in software such as registack 6 to pull out as much detail as possible Going through this process makes a huge difference compared to taking a single shot and all these programs are free to download and I'll link them in the description if you want to check them out. Saturn is currently at our position marking its closest approach to Earth so it appears larger than usual but even during our position a planet's relative size is still quite small so images tend to use a Barlow lens or a tele extender between the telescope and the camera to increase image scale and resolution. A two times Barlow lens effectively doubles a telescope's focal length and focal ratio, which doubles its image scale and resolution, and a three times Barlow lens triples it, and so on and so on. A good rule of thumb to determine which power Barlow lens or tele extender you need is to aim for a focal ratio which is three times your camera's pixel size when the seeing conditions are bad or five times your camera's pixel size when the seeing conditions are good and seven times your camera's pixel size when the seeing is excellent. So the planetary camera I'm using for example is, has got 2.9 micron pixel so if the seeing conditions are excellent we'd want to multiply 2.9 microns by 7 which lets us know to aim for a focal ratio of around f20. This would require a 2.5 to 3 times Barlow lens, which is what I happen to be using here. You can see that I've got the telescope mounted on a motorised mount to counteract the Earth's rotation. And this helps ensure the planet stays bang on in the middle of the sensor and doesn't drift and allows us to capture more frames. But if you don't have a tracking mount, you can repeatedly film the planet as it drifts across the sensor and stitch these mini clips together in free software called PIPP. And again, I'll link that in the description. The camera is linked up to a laptop, allowing me to capture fast frame rate video files using software called SharpCap. So that's the capture software. Uh, despite Saturn being at its closest approach to Earth, I didn't expect, in all honesty, for it to give us good images because it's skimming the rooftops. And as mentioned, we're looking through the Earth's atmosphere low down. And a subsequent clear night, I woke up at 4am looked out the curtains and saw that Saturn Jupiter I saw that Jupiter was blaring away and uh, even despite being tired I got my coat on got out there got set up and it was well worth it the clouds were coming in quite quickly so I tracked really fast but I managed to capture some great data for that as well and the the results um, I could honestly say it felt like I was using a larger telescope than I was using yeah, before I show you the final stat images, I just want to thank my patrons and channel members for their continued support. Thank you so much. And here are the stat images, final processed images for Saturn and Jupiter. 